Uh, this wouldn't have been 16 year old athlete, Blake, but maybe just the, the enthusiast, right? The guy fresh out of playing college football that I was just like, man, I just want to kind of live a normal fitness life now. Oh, if you're lifting for longevity is a lot different than lifting for the, for an elite physique or elite performance. Would you agree? Wow, we would have never believed this. We're on Spotify, we're on Apple, we're on Google. Go out there and listen to us. So we're excited about it. We're glad you're excited about it too. Guys, welcome in. This is Muscle Matters. These are your hosts, Blake Bernard, Steve Southers. And uh, we're coming off Thanksgiving week. Last time we talked about how to stay on track during the holidays. Tonight we thought we would finally wet your palate with some actual training advice and not a beat down of stuff that doesn't work, but things that we know to work between how many decades have you been training? Now? <laughs> oh, I started when I was 17. I'm 52 now. So yeah, four, almost four decades, almost four decades. Yes. I've been training for almost two. So you got 50 years of training experience sitting between these two guys and, uh, and tonight we wanted to give you guys some ammo to really kick off this new year the right way. So, Steve, I'll let you take this thing, man. Um, first of all, let's identify what is probably the number one thing that holds people back from their uh, from res the results they want in the weight room. And what's your favorite way to address that? It's 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 such a loaded question. No, no, no. You can't go diet. You can't go no, sleep. Not, We've not, hammered I'm, those. I, we're not going to mention food. We're not going to mention food. Honestly, what holds most people back is they don't train hard enough. Okay. End, end of the story. You don't train hard enough. Like, I, like I, I, people always talk about, man, I want legs. I want legs. I want legs. I'm like, have you ever thrown up in a trash can? <laughs> They're like, no. I go, well, there, there's why you don't have legs. I mean, there's certain th – you have to be – you can't be afraid of being – medieval you can't be afraid yeah. of going to gladiator school you can't be afraid like i don't know how people work out in one hour like i understand if you're time constraints you've got a busy schedule and you've only got an hour to work out you're 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 only doing it to stay healthy i don't understand one hour workouts it just does not it if i work out an hour i feel like i just robbed myself like, I legitimately robbed myself of a workout. I Give us some context. What is the average run time for you? Two to three hours. Goodness, no way. Yes. Okay, so you would hate me. I got to be out in 75 minutes or less. Hour 15 is my cap, man. And so, and, and I can't, I just can't get this out of my head. Uh, Mel Siff talks about, you know, serum testosterone starts to take a dive at the 50 minute mark. So, Anything past an hour is really kind of wasting your time if you're not enhanced, right? So if you're taking exogenous hormones, that's not going to uh, play as much of a role. But for the natural guy, what are you doing past that? I'm pushing back hard tonight. <laughs> we might disagree tonight, guys. This is gonna be no, good. And, and, it, and I said, this is just belief system and what I've seen work. And the 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 um, the 45 minute body versus the two hour body mm -hmm. they're miles apart um if you're not willing to put force er effort so in your hour and 15 you're you're you're, you're trucking so th that brings me to my favorite training method and i was going to say the same thing people don't train hard enough but i'm a mincer guy yeah. so like i'm going to top sets true failure where I, I sincere failure right i literally cannot do another rep and i do those judiciously in the in the um I put the volume into the movements that aren't going to be near as taxing on my body. Following the 80-20 principle, my 20% goes to the really hard things. Those are the ones I send it on, right? But that allows me to continue growing. I'm getting strength gains constantly. And I do. I like to do back down sets off that top set for the volume that I need. But I'm not spending three hours in there accruing volume that if I can do four sets of eight on something, and I know that it's only the top one or two reps that are actually stimulating to the muscle fiber to actually tell it to grow, then what am I doing all those other reps for? If I can just do one set to absolute you know, Mike failure. Mentor, everything about Mike Bencher is a lie, right? Then why is it working? It's a, Everything about it is a lie. Then why is it working and why does it work for all my clients? Well, different things. Your clients aren't working to be bodybuilders. That is true. So it's a totally different thing. Your, your clients are working to be athletic. Your clients are working to be stronger in a point of field. 
Mm-hmm. But as far as Mike Mentor, he's a liar. Everything about his training is one giant lie that he sold the world. You're going to have to elaborate. Um, he doesn't count his pre-exhaust. No, 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 no. We talked about that. Yeah, but he doesn't count it in his 45 minutes. I, I followed I followed heavy duty. Sure. That is my my love is heavy duty training. I'm strong and I love to be strong. But the first hour and 15 minutes of my workout is all volume. The last 45, which you're doing, is dedicated to power and strength. No, no, no. So we do it in reverse though. So we don't pre-exhaust. We do that on the back end. So we get our accessory volume in the single joint movements. So that's a Louisism, right? But we shove it all there, the compound lifts. So our primary main, our supplemental, our speed stuff, our, our plyometrics, those are all taken. So usually it's the first three lifts, the sprint and the primary jump of the day. Those are going to be taken to sincere, like I'm, I'm setting a record, an mm-hmm. all-time record on those things. Then there's usually two or three uh, accessories that we try to, you know, you have to train... Um, uh, uh, more of the soft tissue stuff, the connective tissues, and as well as, um, you know, easier to recover muscles like triceps, hamstrings, uh, your shoulders, the smaller stuff. That's what we're going to shove our multiple sets into. But man, even without pre-exhausting, um, you know, pecs prior to, to, uh, bench press, right. We're still able to get really strong and I love that our guys are able to bounce back day after day after day. But, and that's what I'm tearing it, away from the, the uh, when it when it comes to and, and that's just the difference in the training is you're training athletes. Mm-hmm. I'm training to be as big as I can get the biggest house. One hundred percent. So, literally, my leg day, I crippled to next leg day, mm-hmm. uh, and that was that was the way I trained. You know, I laugh when I had Dorian Yates train talk now because I followed him directly. Mm-hmm. directly everything he said because Dorian was the first one to walk from behind the curtain and go look what I could do mm-hmm. and I was just just because <gasps> back in the Joe Weider days everything was three sets of ten mm-hmm. and it was very boring it was very blah so when Yates tore open the fabric it was just like oh my god I love that type of training I'm strong and it just it just it worked for me so I everything about the heavy duty principle I use but I use it and the way that they don't talk about it. Sure. We still get a lot of volume in, though, too, on those back down sets. So that's post, uh, post-activation post potentiation, which you could argue those fatigue sets are, yes. right? Or uh, the, uh, 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 those are intensifiers. But pre-exhaustion, what you're talking about, we're just doing it in the in the reverse. So yeah. Highly stimulate the muscle. I would, do Tom's, to I would do Tom's hundreds at the end of my day. I mean, I do all that, and it, would, it just was – I was obsessed with being as big – as I could possibly get. Mm-hmm. And I, I got up to 340 pounds. I had 23 and a half inch arms. So everything was to be as big as I could possibly be. Mm-hmm. So it was always like, I didn't do enough. I didn't do enough. I didn't do enough. It was always, that was the driving mentality. And, you know, it, it served, served me well. I'm, I'm 52. I barely can do much anymore. And I'm still 285 pounds. Absolutely. So the the way it was lived, and I came up with the old timers, and if you, you know, I don't know how many, the 70 and the 60 year olds you've met, they all train the way I train, like, and you see these old dudes, unfortunately, we're all broken. <laughs> so that's, that's the down, point. That's the downside so to it. I, you said you're obsessed yes. with other things. I'm obsessed with what's the minimum I can do to continue growing and continue getting stronger. I've found that to be in the top set protocols. Now, I don't follow his stuff to a T, but I always say, I always give credit to the guys I read, right? So that I can, you know, you can at least get an understanding of where I'm coming from, right? So I'm trying to do the absolute bare minimum. I'm sticking to the stimulating reps and nothing more, right? And at the end of the day, it saves me a lot of time because I don't have three hours to train. And the usual, and I would reckon that probably, Majority of our don't. listeners yes. don't have yes. that either. So I think you and I agree on what's essential. And that is the issue is that people don't train hard enough. Yes. So you mentioned you're crippled to your next leg day. Yes. And I've done that before too, right? Um, that's the way I definitely used to train. My body hated me for it. I am I think my thing now is I, my objective is to train like I'm 60 now so that I'm still able to train like I do now when I'm 60. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, no. And I'm still breaking records on a, on a weekly basis, and I'm yes. 
and you know according to the goal that's how i train and man if i can still stay athletic when i'm 60 and with a body and a physique that i'm proud of hopefully i'm still alive so i can see this dude, come on baby <laughs> i can tell you i have no back issues no knees no none of that stuff man and I, I i've never felt better than i do right now good yeah here's the here's the thing though between both of what we're saying taking things to actual failure and like sincere exertions right where you're um pushing past limits you i'm sure you keep a workout log no not anymore not anymore not anymore you don't but keep what, track your numbers uh, no it's all up top yeah you really remember that stuff yes oh dude you're a savant yeah it's it, the it, opposite of me but, um, it, it was my obsession obsession so you're like rain man so when it comes to the gym <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> yes I can't even fathom that. I'm yeah. so ADHD, I cannot remember what I did yesterday. So I have to keep a log. But you remember the number you got to beat, right? Yes. Okay, that's what I'm getting at. I don't see anybody walking around with notebooks. Uh, I, I can't even go into this new generation, and I won't go into this new generation because they take, I think our listeners are probably tired of us <laughs> talking about the new generation. When you're... Like, you're, <laughs> you're our and hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes of working out you're 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 trucking i see these guys are legitimately 45 minutes and they're picking up a 20 pound dumbbell and it drives me insane i'm like there's no stimuli there you're, you're not doing anything you you have to cause in order to grow and you you, you have to do something to the muscle tissue mm -hmm. you've got to affect it unless you're chemically enhanced through the brain cells. But at the end of the day, that chemical enhancement is only going to let it go so far. I meet these youngsters and they're on a gram of this, a gram of this, a gram of And it's just like they're on all these compounds and they're only big as a minute. Um, I sent you that video today and it was my giggle because of what the, the guy said. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they all want to be bodybuilders, but they're all physique. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's... And they got nothing to show. <sighs> and... The, it, dry, it drives me insane. I, I, anyway, so if you do not keep, for me, my favorite my favorite type of training and is time under tension. Mm -hmm. I believe you should be that muscle should be at constant tension. It should never be a lockout because, and this is just bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. So you should never be at a lockout as a bodybuilder because a, a muscle that's locked, a, a muscle that's locked out is resting on the joints, and if it's resting on the joints, it's taken away from the stimuli to the the actual muscle belly. So the goal is to get as much blood into the muscle belly to cause it to engorge because blood carries the nutrition. Nutrition is is the key to growth. You have to do all these things to make it actually grow. You have to break. What is that? What do they call that stupid thing that's on top of the muscle? Um, it's the membrane that's on top of the muscle. You have to, you want to, ah, I'm going blank. It's a big word. I suck at big words and you have to, uh, ah, I can't, it's stuck, but you have to actually cause tears in that fiber. Like people go get deep tissue massages to cause that fiber to tear. So the body can grow. It, it's sarcoplasmic, hyper, sar, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So they have to cause it to tear. So if you don't mm -hmm. keep a constant tension and keep a constant blood flow to me, the pump, as a, and as a bodybuilder, and this is bodybuilding training, to be a bodybuilder, the pump is the most important thing of everything. If you do not have a mind-blowing pump, and it should be, ah, it, it should be painful. So what are your favorite rep schemes to achieve that mind-blowing, you mentioned hundreds. Um, what are your, some of your favorite techniques that somebody could walk away from this, try tomorrow, and actually absolutely hobble out of the gym? supersets I, I love, man yeah i love the superset like i said what's a superset if somebody listening doesn't oh, know man um you go find you a nice fly dumbbell press bench press and you find you about 50 percent of your max and then you find about 50 percent of your maximum dumbbells and then you set a good did thing on a uh, flex and you do um 10 sets of 10 each that should be your day. You should be pretty much wrecked. That's that's a wreck set. Like you're wrecked. I actually stole that from Jay Cutler, mm -hmm. Mr. I don't bench press. And I was like, fool, I stole something from you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, it was two twenty five for ten, hundred pound dumbbells for ten, hundred pounds on the fly on the on the pec fly for ten, and it's just thirty second breaks. And the thirty second break. Is at the end of the three, mm -hmm. not in between. You don't get the rest in between. Right. It's and you have your dumbbells right there. You rack it. You put it down. You pick your dumbbells out. You go, step down. 
Um, you can do dumbbell flies. You can do machine flies. Machine flies allow you to catch a little bit of breath. But yeah, yeah. So, so are you a fan of less exercises, more sets? Or are you like, hey, man, I'm going to get my 30 sets however I get it kind of a deal? I'm going to get my 30 sets. Okay. I, I truly... Keep it simple. Uh, keep it simple. Okay. Um, I remember training legs with uh, J- Jason Huss in Vegas with him, and I he fabulous legs, and he I call him the Jason Huss, and it's a squat, and it's three down, one up for a set of 10. So it's essentially four reps per set. So you're doing 40 reps on total, but it's three quarters, bucket, 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 mm-hmm. bucket, up, bucket, oh, bucket, dude, bucket, bucket, up. Oh, dude, terrible. Bucket, bucket, and... I, and yeah yeah you will not feel your butt for yeah. weeks. yeah yes. no definitely so i love um i love what you said about supersets that's i call that a giant set a superset in my mind is like two exercises and then giant set is three plus but i've Correct. always trained that way one of the things that that i really like about supersets and uh other parties call that like density training whatever you know because you're making your hour more dense by fitting more volume in there is my work capacity is so much higher than everyone else's because my rest is used on something that won't affect the exercise that I care about, right? So today, tonight, right before coming here, I hit. Um, uh, I was doing single arm overhead dumbbell press because I got to get my overhead press better, and um, it's always been a major weakness of mine. So I'm shoving a lot of my uh, my heavy volume into that, and I'm supersetting that with something like uh, like pull-ups, Bulgarian split squats. Right now I'm on a to- total body thing that's kind of, sh- it's, I like it. I got to mix things up. Everyone's total body is where it's at for me right now. But it allows me to work on other things that won't tax me for the overhead press I care about, right? What happens? It ends up turning into natural conditioning because that's going to wipe you, you know, if you're not taking real rest. Or if I'm going heavier, I'll just take 60 seconds between each thing. That way I'm genuinely... No, you know, no, when uh, you do recover when you it. do get to the heavy sets, it does require more mm-hmm. more rest. That's, that's why you always hear us talk about powerlifters being in the rack for f- five hours. Because they need the, rest for two to five minutes. Yeah, they're know? doing 75% max reps uh, for sets of five. It, you take some time to have to do it again. Take you Build up that energy. Uh, yeah, so. I like getting my conditioning without stepping on the Stairmaster. So I'm like trying to find ways to always make my stuff more dense. And naturally, I just kind of sh- stay in decent shape all year. It's not the same as if I was going no, and you know, I, hitting dedicated conditioning days. But my baseline so much higher with the giant sets and uh, super when, sets. When I, was, when I had a motor, I would have two extra pair of shirts. And that was just from the gym session. Because it was 30-second rest. I mean, catch my mm-hmm. wind, go. Catch my wind, go. Catch my mm-hmm. wind, go. Catch my wind, go. You go, I go, you go, I go. There was no hanging out conversations. Talk about gnarly pumps too. Yes. Because like you're those. So, okay. I'll, I'll, what was the, the giant set you mentioned earlier? It was a press dumbbell, uh, compound bench press, dumbbell press and flies. You're using the same muscle in different ways, but the irradiation effect is still present where like even on those flies, you're still affecting the shoulders that were involved in the two presses and those pumps are nasty. And what basically it, you're, you're, you're playing a game with your mind. Think about when you're training, you can squat, fall down and you're done. Right. Mm-hmm. But you can go leg press. Your, your mind has decided that it's done with that workout. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the nervous system, everything is shut down, but you still have enough enough muscle fiber to go over there and, and leg press. Mm-hmm. So it's the mind, so the trick is like when you're doing these sets, you're benching and then your mind's going, I'm done benching. Sure. Now I got the dumbbells, I'm gonna set them up. So everything you said is correct, but you're also playing a game with your mind. Sure. And i tell you what else I don't see people doing, especially, and, and I'm go I'm picking on bodybuilders. I don't see drop sets anymore. Ooh. Like run the rack type stuff, or just like a single drop. Run the set rack, or, drop okay. drop sets. You don't see them snatching those dumbbells. Man. I mean, you haven't lived until you've got fifty pounds and you can't move it, and you're you're coming down from whatever your max rep is, and you get down to like the bar, and the bar is 
No. Nope. Yeah. How often do you uh, like? How many times a workout? How many times a week do you suggest that people throw those in? Drop sets. Drop sets. You cannot do every workout. Right. You cannot do that often. But drop sets should be there for um, stagnant days. Like if you're just having a bad workout, it's just not going there. Your mind's like not there. You know, like ah, just not happening. Uh, it works great when you have a competitive partner. If you've got a competitive partner, drop sets work great. I, Put you in a body bag. Because <laughs> nobody wants to go first. Nobody wants to go first because whoever goes first, the one who goes second is always going to do one more rep. Yeah. And then when it's your set again. It's like overtime. Man, if the, the better the partner, the better the drop set. Um uh, Oh, God. It's a great observation, but I like what you said about throw that in on a, on an off day, like when you're just not feeling it, man. Yes. That's a great, great, great. Because it's tip. not something you can do all the time because you will tear something up. It will. Mm -hmm. There's. It's not an all the time thing, but it's it's a every blue moon. I don't. I really hate myself today, and I'm just going to uh, destroy it. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I just believe that the the. I'm just one of those people that believe in doms. The more doms you have, the the better your growth is. Dom's is delayed onset muscle soreness, guys. Yes. So, so basically the more miserable you can make yourself, yes. the better. Yeah. Yes. All right. Fair enough. So you mentioned time under tension. Do, are you a fan of tempos? I, I'm not a fan of, of the, of the slow countdown. Okay. I am a fan of pumping. Okay. I'm, I'm a pumper. If you watch me train, I still, I'm still a pumper now. A lot of the youngsters ask me, I said, how come you don't come out? And I go, because I'm training my chest. I'm training my shoulders and my tricep. I'm training this part of my leg. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I, I'm working on a certain one. And, and like I tell, you shouldn't watch me train if you're trying to learn how to work out. Because my brain and my mind have, have such a connection now. Have you ever seen like the pros? It is the ugliest workout you ever see in your life. Like not one single rep is correct. Mm -hmm. But their mind and their muscle have a have a great connection. Um, I just believe in pumping. That's me. The more the more engorged I can get it, the mm -hmm. better growth I I and that's just and, and it's an I believe. You're going to find out what works best for you. That's why there's a plethora of books, there's a plethora of of training techniques and you just have to find the one that works best for you. Mhm. Mm that's why you and I's training styles are so different. <laughs> yes, you, you know, every when you find the one that works for you and you, it, it it works. Uh, I was watching one today, and uh, what did the guy say? Some days you have to forget what you're doing. Just go in there, and be like ah, I'm just going to do this and let it happen. Oh, I'm just. And when I say, man, I wish I could. Find, I, I'm gonna have to look for my old journal. I'm gonna go to my mom's house see if I can find my own journal. Uh, I, I was, yeah, yeah. I go back to those old journals and I'm like, dude, what the heck was I doing? You know, what was I thinking, man? Um, I like going in with way less expect expectation, uh, because I psych myself out if I, if I think too much about that lift, that's going to destroy me and I'll find a way to just kind of like beat around the bush. You know what I mean? I'll put off my workout till later in the day. I'll be kind of afraid of it. I so, so, so prefer to have like a general plan of these are the things I'm trying to accomplish today, but I don't choose the lifts until I get in there. How about you? I have an idea of where I'm going. Yeah. But my body will tell me what I'm doing. And the downside, uh, bring back all kind of flashbacks. The downside of working out in a fitness center, I can have a plan, but I may never make it to that machine right there. Sure. I may never make it to, especially when I, I, when I started, you know, no, no disrespect to you, John. Especially when I started working at a uh, body exchange, body exchange did not have a plethora of equipment, so it just got real. Like there was two bench presses, mm -hmm. and I may not be able to. Get, and I was an angry gorilla back then. And just, just some days I may not be able to get to it with sure. one squat rack. Like, how are you a squat monster and can't can't get to squat? It used to drive me insane. So yeah. I learned. So the plan goes out the window. It's hard to write. If you've got your own gym, you can have a plan. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That is exactly right. One of the best things that, that happened when I got in my garage gym too was um, 
getting able to accrue, being able to, to accrue more equipment gave me more options for what to do in those giant sets. You only have a squat rack, my people training at home, and that's a big thing right now. Um, if you're using the squat rack to bench in, you're kind of limited what else you can use that squat rack for, you know what I mean? And so my home gym now it has a little bit, I've refined it to only the things that, that I use consistently so i've got like my power block dumbbells up to 90s which 90s not enough anymore but i gotta i just get my volume with those got a glued ham raise um my that half thing, rack that thing is so i wish i'd have known about those they would have been around when i was when i was training I they're wanted, actually incredibly versatile yes yes you I, can do all kinds of stuff on them yes i look at those things now i'm not i'm not tearing my hamstrings off man but you guys have a couple inverse curls yes I'm not, I, I'm not tearing my hamstrings off anymore. No, with little assistance. <laughs> yeah, no. Come on, man. <laughs> I love those. Yeah, um, my every facility I, I build from now on, um, I do believe in the inverse curl, but you can get so much, so many more exercise and weird variations out of a glute ham raise. They're, they still have benefit, and I like burning out a glute ham raise a lot more than I do on an inverse curl. But the, the, that man, you you will have strong hamstrings. Mm -hmm. No way, fans or butts. Mm -hmm. Now tell me where the hamstrings lie in, in your hierarchy of development for a bodybuilder. They get their own day for me. Really? Yes, hamstring. When I and that was you. You weren't here when when Tom and I had this discussion. I I was one of those people. I would compete and I would do a hard line look at my physique. A what? A hard. I just look at my physique sure. and, and just be like, no. And I just realized like I'm squatting a absurd amount of muscle, a weight, but I didn't have hamstrings. Because mm. hamstrings, you know, they get overlooked. You walk away from an hour of squatting, you're not really wanting that. There's not a lot of energy left to go and pick do hamstrings like you should. Um, but hamstrings, when I was doing it, they I had to give them their own day, and that is how I was able to grow a pair of hamstrings. What is your favorite exercise for the hamstrings? Stiff leg hand, stiff legs. So not RDLs, st stiff legs, deficit. Yep. It's, okay. Yep. Because you can pull more weight. And I can you can get, pull more weight stiff leg? Oh, I can't. Interesting. Yes. yes. I've always been able to pull more with an RDL. Ah, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but that'll that, make them pop. It, it, so it just was the stretch yeah. to the pull. And I could just, I could put bar bending weight in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So it did really, and then then uh, the standing one leg curl for the high volume, because it, because that mimics track, mm -hmm. and that motion. If you look at somebody who sprints, they have beautiful hamstrings. What's your favorite machine for the standing ham curl? <sighs> hammer still makes the best one. I love the hammer, the one with the the knee thing that switches. Ha oh, I love make, the hammer. Strength. Hammer still makes the best one. Yep, I agree. I hammer, agree. Hammer still makes. I love and it's. There's a lot of new companies, and I and I have to say, I, 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 I'm still have a passion towards the gym, and it's still there. It's just not as loud as it was. I follow a lot of these new gyms, uh, the fusions, the, uh, uh, the 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 two of them that are in the, the Middle East, and uh, man, there's a lot of neat little new equipment that I wish I could touch. Mm -hmm. Like oh, I see these equipment, I'm like, I saw a. Um, uh, uh, a row machine mm -hmm. and I was just it, just looking at it it was in one of the Saudi gyms and I was like that just looks so fun mm -hmm. oh it just looked fun yeah there's some grail items for sure that if I was like man if I just have square footage to burn <laughs> you know get, get, a, get a couple prime fitness equipment uh, you know, there are just some crazy brands out there doing good work I think in at the end of the day, if if I had to give advice to even a younger, maybe 16-year-old Blake before I started kind of getting into this world and learning at an accelerated rate, um, I definitely would have told him he wasn't training hard enough. Um, but I also would have told him uh, to be more judicious where he was putting his volume because the kids that get the back injuries, blow out the knees, they're always banged up at practice, whatever, you know, oftentimes they're putting too much volume into the big stuff that's the most taxing. And I'm like, man, if you're just chasing a good physique and want to want to, you know, live long and um, uh, this wouldn't have been 16 year old athlete, Blake, but maybe just the, the enthusiast, right? The guy fresh out of playing college football that I was just like, man, I just want to kind of live a normal fitness life now. 
Oh, if you're lifting for longevity is a lot different than lifting for the, for an elite physique or elite performance. Would you agree? Yes, I, I definitely would have told uh, young me, <laughs> hey, bro, you'll be strong one day. Don't try to do one rep everything. Man, <laughs> it that's was, great. Because you think about it, th- those young days, everything was a one rep. You'd, you'd lift, 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 and then it was like, ah, oh, bro, let's see how strong I am. Why not? It, it, it was always how strong, how, and ah, so much, would have got so much more out of it. Maybe that's that should be our next episode. Lessons to a younger, like love letters to young young Stephen Blake. You know what I mean? You know what? Yes. If I if they I could go back in time, man, it'd be a different story. And it's not even like about living in the in the in the past, but rather if we can help somebody else avoid those pitfalls, the things that maybe held us back from avoiding a surgery or you know uh uh not being able to squat for six months whatever because i've had so many of those soft tissue things and i'm like i was being a freaking knucklehead i pulled all my hamstrings so i wasn't training hamstrings wouldn't wouldn't you know it you know what i mean when I, I would definitely say the number one thing i would tell young me ow means chill <laughs> <laughs> i remember when i popped a tendon on my chest and uh I just said, oh, I just want to bench over 315. And I just felt it snake away. And I was like, oh, just stand. It's like, I just. That's some logic. (laughs) Made sense at the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that's next, man. So, Steve, to wrap this thing up, the number one thing that you would would tell um, uh, an enthusiast, right, that's looking for an elite physique, what's one thing they should start throwing in their program tomorrow? Chase the pump. I mean, honestly, chase the pump. Uh, the better the pump, the better the growth. And in order to get a pump, you have to train hard enough. Because it, whether you want to do tension, whether you want to do speed, whether you want to shorten your time, whatever it is, in order to get a pump, you have to go hard enough to get a pump. Mm-hmm. Um, and make it burn. Not just a pump, but like, ooh, I got a pump, but like, crap, that burned. Absolutely. And my advice, guys, would be regardless of the goal, you've got to stimulate the muscle to tell it. Basically, you have to send a signal to tell it to do what it, what it, I mean, let's face it, if it wanted to do it, you wouldn't have to put any work in, right? So ultimately, in order to coax that muscle to into the adaptation that you desire, you have to send a signal large enough to, for it to make a change. It's got to say, oh, wow, what is going on? I don't want to ever, ever feel that way again. It adapts, it changes, so that next time that becomes easier. But then you got a new number you got to beat. So my biggest recommendation would be keep a log, right? Keep records and always chase to break those, either for reps, for time under tension, for uh, for weight being lifted. There are a million records you can keep. There's always something to break. And if you are not trying to push your limits on a daily basis, you're just not going to achieve your full potential. Amen. So, guys. Nothing to say to that. Absolutely. This has been Muscle Matters. Steve, where can they find you? 7420 District Boulevard, right across the street from Nestle. Very good. And you guys can catch me at Grindhouse underscore SC on Instagram. Until next time, this has been Muscle Matters.